is the G500. It's our new all electric scooter. Um, our ambition with this vehicle is to create a new safety standard and demonstrate to the market that you can have an e-scooter that's safe to ride, has a safe battery, and is really fun. So we've really tried to focus on four main areas, four main pain points that the customer and I think the market has. Uh, that's rider safety, battery safety, utility, and then service, maintenance, and repair. So when it comes to battery safety, I think we are the very first scooter brand to ever use LFP batteries. So that's lithium ferrophosphate. Um, it's pretty widely known in the industry that lithium ferrophosphate is a, is a safe battery. Um, it has no thermal runaway, so it can't catch fire. Um, it has an amazing 3000 charge cycles, uh, which is completely different to an NMC battery. Um, you could also supercharge that battery, so you can charge it in about an hour and it will be up to 80%. Um, also that battery technology and chemistry uh, has a very constant um, current discharge throughout the whole range of the, uh, the, one, light, of, of the one charge. So as you're riding, uh, normally with an NMC battery, you'll get kind of like a dip in performance. So what you've got with this battery is a, a, a really great performing battery cell and it's really safe. So our customer uh, can, can be uh, happy and content that it's not gonna catch fire in the home. Um, when it comes to rider safety, um, the long wheelbase, the large wheels, uh, we've got dual suspension, which I'll show. Front and back, so there's an air shock there. Uh, the wide foot plate uh, just gives a really confident and comfortable ride. So what we want is we want you to get on here uh, and feel in a matter of minutes of riding that you just feel confident and comfortable. Um, and that's what this does. And, and the feedback today and yesterday of people taking it on a test track has been exactly that. So having them say that to us is just proof of concept. Um, the other area um, that um, we think is important is utility. So if we're gonna swap uh, car journeys for micro mobility, we need to be able to carry stuff. So this is the rear pannier. It's got a normal 10 mil bar here on both sides. So a normal bicycle uh, pannier bag can clip in here. So you can get 15, 20 liters on both sides. Um, and in terms of weight, you can get a payload of about 60 pounds. So that's more than generous uh, uh, payload for the average journey and, and, and user. Um, these pannier racks are also massively expandable. So we manufacture these so we can have all different shapes and sizes. So if you wanted a special adapter for your wakeboard or for your like, like a kid's car, a car seat or something, we can do that. Um, and we look forward to having feedback from customers of what they want. Um, and then the, the final area that I wanted to talk about uh, was uh, service maintenance and repair. So all of our componentry is plug and play. Uh, you can access it really quickly. Uh, you don't need any special tool, tools or tooling. There's no like plastic snap fits. Uh, you can take the throttle off in a matter of, of, of minutes. Um, you can take the foot plate out and replace the controller in about five minutes. So what we want is as much uptime as possible. So we want bike shops, we want uh, our dealers to be able to quickly maintain service and repair to get the user back on the road. Um, so we're made in the UK and we're really proud of that. Um, we're looking here at the show to find retailers, to find partners, to find feedback. Um, we want to hear what you think about our vehicle, we want you to come and test ride it. And uh, yeah, we're really excited to launch the, the G500. Two quick questions. So first, what's the cost? Uh, so this will retail about $3,000 US dollars. Okay. Um, how defensible is the use of the LFP battery? How what, sorry? Defensible. Oh, defensible. Yeah. So we, um, this is the, the first like pre-production sample. We can actually lock the foot plate so you can't actually open it. No, no, no. But I'm saying. Defensible as in stolen. No, defensible as in other manufacturers using the same battery, which then means it's not a differentiator for you. Okay, so we uh, manufacture the battery in the UK. Uh, my personal opinion is everyone should use LFP. I'm not going to try and create a market position where we're the only ones doing it. I think the NMC batteries and the fires are not only damaging, uh, damaging for customers, obviously, but it's damaging to our industry. We need to, uh, so this vehicle is to try and set an example of what safety could be. Um, so, you know, the policy makers, uh, the, the, the guys that are in power of making change, you know, 
look at this as an example. And if you want to share and understand what we've done and how we did it, we're happy to talk about it. These LFP batteries have been used in Teslas, right? So That's right. why why are more companies not doing this? Battery safety is, yep. is such an issue. We're seeing yep. fires all over the place, mm -hmm. particularly in New York. What have you been able to do that others haven't been able to do? I, I honestly don't really know why it's not more readily available. I mean, I mean the main downfall of LFP is um, uh, the fact that the energy density is not the same as NMC. So you need more physical space to have a similar battery pack of the same power output. So you need more space. Uh, so that's the main downfall. But um, I, I, don't, I don't understand why, because the cost is very similar. Uh, it's not ex exactly a, a really radically more expensive chemistry to use. All of the benefits like far outweigh what NMC does. So um, I honestly don't know why they're not, they're not doing it. I think it's mainly um, the supply chain most people, you know, they'll buy, they'll buy an OEM battery. Uh, we've put the pack together ourselves. We're getting it completely tested ourselves. So that's an advantage. But I think most companies are not prepared to go to that length of designing their own pack and having it certified. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd hope that we can inspire some change and show that it's possible. And if there is a demand there, then maybe, you know, the OEM suppliers will then start producing packs and forms of this nature. Uh, have you been walking around the show? A, a little bit, yeah. A little bit. Okay. Either at this show or in general, who do you see as your closest competitors? Uh, uh, well, there's no one really doing a large wheel scooter at the show. So it's tricky, right? Uh, no one's really doing the dual suspension like we're doing. Um, so I think we're kind of on our own in some ways. Um, yeah, I mean, lots of people have tried the vehicle yesterday and we've had great feedback. That's awesome. Nope. What? Do you, yeah, do, is it related to the question I just asked? Okay, what length of trip do you expect people to do on this? Okay, so this vehicle uh, is kind of half folding. It's not fully compact folding. Um, we think this should be five kilometers plus. Um, this is designed to be ridden on the road. That's why we have, you know, motorcycle spec indicators, rear brake light, high beam, low beam. We've got a really great display here. Um, we, re we want you to ride it on the road for a good considerable journey. Um, the range of this battery pack is 40 kilometers, uh, but you can supercharge the LFP in like an hour and you back up to 80%. So this is kind of like that idea of the, the fuel tank kind of concept of keep topping it up. And that's the great thing about LFP. You can like charge for 20 minutes, ride it, charge it again, and it won't degrade the battery. Uh, you can really kind of like, you know, hammer these batteries like that and they'll be fine. What a lot of people have talked about is how to get the scooter into their little 400 square foot, you know, four story walk up in New York City. Yep. So who are you selling this to? Who's, yeah. who's the target market? Okay. So um, it's an interesting topic. I've been talking to a few people about this during the show. Um, our history uh, as a company, uh, we've made uh, kick scooters, historically folding ones that are for that customer. Take it up to... Uh, your 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 high rise uh, rental flat or apartment. Um, I actually think the the pursuit of that kind of like perfect small wheel electric vehicle is a little bit of a ghost that everyone's chasing. I think the fact that when you have a small wheel unfolding, you compromise so much of the ride. Um, what we try to do here is put um, the ride at the very center of everything. I want you to get on this and feel like it's a Rolls Royce of scooters. In fact, uh, Horace said he felt it, it was like a, the Bentley of scooters today when he rode it. So um, I think when you have something that's really compact that folds down, you compromise the ride. And so this customer uh, is, is like an e-bike customer. They'll keep it downstairs in the garage. They'll charge it downstairs at the bottom where the, all the cars are parked. Um, they won't take this up to their apartment. This weighs 25 kilos. So it's quite a heavy vehicle. Yeah. Um, okay, so direct sales. That's the plan? Uh, yep. Okay. What's the bomb cost? Uh, for this one, uh, production cost is just over $1,000. Yep. Yeah. I mean, to that question, and again, this is more of a comment than a question. I do see a vehicle like this um, in a suburban context or in smaller or medium-sized cities as well, especially with going on the road. Um, very cool. Okay. Final round of applause. Thank oh, you thank so you. much. Yeah. Thank you.